Hello, welcome to reading numbers. It's, this time we're going to just finish it. 31 to 36. Let's see the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of daily bread. Forgive us for our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for another beautiful day on this beautiful earth. And thank you for allowing us to wake up today. And thank you for what you did for us in the past, present, and what you will do for us in the future. I'm sorry for the sins I have sinned, and I forgive everybody who sinned against me. And thank you for keeping me on the right path in life and away from the wrong path in life. And please help Dan get through his mental and physical problems he's having lately. Please get him strong mentally so he can get through this and strong physically as well. Help the Smithley family from the UK rebuild their house and help the people in the um, Western Europe overcome the floods that they have. And Mary T and family too, uh, I just pray the house is okay. In the name of Jesus, amen. Chapter 31, Conquest of the Midianites. Then the Lord said to Moses, On behalf of the people of Israel, take revenge on the Midianites for leading them into idolatry. After that, you will die and join your ancestors. So Moses said to the people, Choose some men and arm them to fight the Lord's war of revenge against Midian. From each tribe of Israel, send 1,000 men into battle. So they chose 1,000 men from each tribe of Israel, a total of 12,000 men armed for battle. Then Moses sent them out, 1,000 men from each tribe, and Phinehas, son of Eleazar the priest, led them into battle. They carried along the holy objects of the sanctuary and the trumpets for sounding the charge. They attacked Midian as the Lord had commanded Moses, and they killed all the men. All five of the Midianite kings, Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, and Reba, died in the battle. They also killed Balaam, son of Beor, with the sword. Then the Israelite army captured the Midianite women and children and seized their cattle and flocks and all their wealth as plunder. They burned all the towns and villages where the Midianites had lived. After they had gathered the plunder and captives, both people and animals, they brought them all to Moses and Eleazar the priest and to the whole community of Israel, which was camped on the plains of Moab beside the Jordan River across from Jericho. Moses, Eleazar the priest, and all the leaders of the community went to meet them outside the camp. But Moses was furious with all the generals and captains who had returned from the battle. Why have you let all the women live? he demanded. These are the very ones who followed Balaam's advice and caused the people of Israel to rebel against the Lord at Mount Peor. They are the ones who caused the plague to strike the Lord's people. So kill all the boys and all the women who have had intercourse with a man. Only the young girls who are virgins may live. You may keep them for yourselves. And all of you who have killed anyone or touched a dead body must stay outside the camp for seven days. You must purify yourselves and your captives on the third and seventh days. Purify all your clothing, too, and everything made of leather, goat hair, or wood. Then Eleazar the priest said to the men who were in the battle, The Lord has given Moses this legal requirement. Anything made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, tin, or lead... That is, all metals that do not burn must be passed through fire in order to be made ceremonially pure. These metal objects must then be further purified with the water of purification. But everything that burns must be purified by the water alone. On the seventh day, you must wash your clothes and be purified. Then you may return to the camp. Division of the Plunder and the Lord said to Moses, You and Eleazar the priest and the family leaders of each tribe are to make a list of all the plunder taken in the battle, including the people and animals. Then divide the plunder into two parts and give half to the men who fought the battle and half to the rest of the people. From the army's portion, first give the Lord his share of the plunder, one of every five hundred of the prisoners and of the cattle, donkeys, sheep, and goats. Give this share of the army's half to Eleazar the priest as an offering to the Lord. 
From the half that belongs to the people of Israel, take one of every 50 of the prisoners and of the cattle, donkeys, sheep, goats, and other animals. Give this share to the Levites who are in charge of maintaining the Lord's tabernacle. So Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. The plunder remaining from everything the fighting men had taken totaled 675,000 sheep and goats, 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 virgin girls. Half of the plunder was given to the fighting men. It totaled 337,500 sheep and goats, of which 675 were the Lord's share. 36,000 cattle, of which 72 were the Lord's share. 30,500 donkeys, of which 61 were the Lord's share. And 16,000 virgin girls, of whom 32 were the Lord's share. Moses gave all the Lord's share to Eleazar the priest, just as the Lord had directed him. Half of the plunder belonged to the people of Israel, and Moses separated it from the half belonging to the fighting men. It totaled 337,500 sheep and goats, 36,000 cattle, 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 virgin girls. From the half share given to the people, Moses took one of every 50 prisoners and animals and gave them to the Levites, who maintained the Lord's tabernacle. All this was done as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then all the generals and captains came to Moses and said, We, your servants, have accounted for all the men who went out to battle under our command. Not one of us is missing. So we are presenting the items of gold we captured as an offering to the Lord from our share of the plunder. Armbands, bracelets, rings, earrings, and necklaces. This will purify our lives before the Lord and make us right with him. So Moses and Eleazar the priest received the gold from all the military commanders, all kinds of jewelry and crafted objects. In all, the gold that the generals and captains presented as a gift to the Lord weighed about 420 pounds. All the fighting men had taken some of the plunder for themselves. So Moses and Eleazar the priest accepted the gifts from the generals and captains and brought the gold to the tabernacle as a reminder to the Lord that the people of Israel belonged to him. Hmm. Chapter 32. The tribes east of the Jordan. The tribes of Reuben and Gad owned vast numbers of livestock. So when they saw that the lands of Jazer and Gilead were ideally suited for their flocks and herds, they came to Moses, Eleazar the priest, and the other leaders of the community. They said, Notice the towns of Adarah, Debon, Jazer, Nimrah, Heshbon, Elila, Sibma, Nebo, and Beon. The Lord has conquered this whole area for the community of Israel, and it is ideally suited for all our livestock. If we have found favor with you, please let us have this land as our property, instead of giving us land across the Jordan River. Do you intend to stay here while your brothers go across and do all the fighting? Moses asked the men of Gad and Reuben. Why do you want to discourage the rest of the people of Israel from going across to the land the Lord has given them? Your ancestors did the same thing when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. After they went up to the valley of Eshkol and explored the land, they discouraged the people of Israel from entering the land the Lord was giving them. Then the Lord was very angry with them, and he vowed, Of all those I rescued from Egypt, no one who is twenty years old or older will ever see the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for they have not obeyed me wholeheartedly. The only exceptions are Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, son of Nun, for they have wholeheartedly followed the Lord. The Lord was angry with Israel and made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years until the entire generation that sinned in the Lord's sight had died. But here you are, a brood of sinners doing exactly the same thing. You are making the Lord even angrier with Israel. If you turn away from him like this and he abandons them again in the wilderness, you will be responsible for destroying this entire nation. But they approached Moses and said, We simply want to build pens for our livestock and fortified towns for our wives and children. Then we will arm ourselves and lead our fellow Israelites into battle until we have brought them safely to their land. 
Meanwhile, our families will stay in the fortified towns we build here, so they will be safe from any attacks by the local people. We will not return to our homes until all the people of Israel have received their portions of land. But we do not claim any of the land on the other side of the Jordan. We would rather live here on the east side and accept this as our grant of land. Then Moses said, if you keep your word and arm yourselves for the Lord's battles, and if your troops cross the Jordan and keep fighting until the Lord has driven out his enemies, then you may return when the Lord has conquered the land. You will have fulfilled your duty to the Lord and to the rest of the people of Israel, and the land on the east side of the Jordan will be your property from the Lord. But if you fail to keep your word, then you will have sinned against the Lord, and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. Go ahead and build towns for your families and pens for your flocks, but do everything you have promised. Then the men of Gad and Reuben replied, We, your servants, will follow your instructions exactly. Our children, wives, flocks, and cattle will stay here in the towns of Gilead, but all who are able to bear arms will cross over to fight for the Lord, just as you have said. So Moses gave orders to Eliezer the priest, Joshua, son of Nun, and the leaders of the clans of Israel. He said, The men of Gad and Reuben, who are armed for battle, must cross the Jordan with you to fight for the Lord. If they do, give them the land of Gilead as their property when the land is conquered. But if they refuse to arm themselves and cross over with you, then they must accept land with the rest of you in the land of Canaan. The tribes of Gad and Reuben said again, We are your servants, and we will do as the Lord has commanded. We will cross the Jordan into Canaan, fully armed, to fight for the Lord. But our property will be here on this side of the Jordan. So Moses assigned land to the tribes of Gad, Reuben, and half the tribe of Manasseh, son of Joseph. He gave them the territory of King Sihon of the Amorites, and the land of King Og of Bashan, the whole land with its cities and surrounding lands. The descendants of Gad built the towns of Debon, Adaroth, Aror, Atroth, Shofan, Jazer, Jogbia, Beth Nimrah, and Beth Haran. These were all fortified towns with pens for their flocks. The descendants of Reuben built the towns of Heshbon, Eliel, Kiritheum, Nebo, Baalmeon, and Sibma. They changed the names of some of the towns they conquered and rebuilt. Then the descendants of Maker of the tribe of Manasseh went to Gilead and conquered it, and they drove out the Amorites living there. So Moses gave Gilead to the Makerites, descendants of Manasseh, and they settled there. The people of Jair, another clan of the tribe of Manasseh, captured many of the towns in Gilead and changed the name of that region to the towns of Jair. Meanwhile, a man named Noba captured the town of Kenath and its surrounding villages, and he renamed that area Noba after himself. Chapter 33, Remembering Israel's Journey. This is the route the Israelites followed as they marched out of Egypt under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. At the Lord's direction, Moses kept a written record of their progress. These are the stages of their march, identified by the different places where they stopped along the way. They set out from the city of Ramesses in early spring, on the 15th day of the first month. On the morning after the first Passover celebration, the people of Israel left defiantly in full view of all the Egyptians. Meanwhile, the Egyptians were burying all their firstborn sons whom the Lord had killed the night before. The Lord had defeated the gods of Egypt that night with great acts of judgment. After leaving Ramesses, the Israelites set up camp at Succoth. Then they left Succoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. They left Etham and turned back toward pi Hahiroth opposite baal Zephon and camped near Migdal. They left pi Hahiroth and crossed the Red Sea into the wilderness beyond. Then they traveled for three days into the Etham wilderness and camped at Marah. They left Marah and camped at Elam, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees. They left Elam and camped beside the Red Sea. They left the Red Sea and camped in the wilderness of Sin. They left the wilderness of Sin and camped at Dovka. They left Dovka and camped at Alush. They left Alush and camped at Rephidim, where there was no water for the people to drink. They left Rephidim and camped in the wilderness of Sinai. They left the wilderness of Sinai and camped at Kibroth Hata'ava. They left Kibroth Hata'ava and camped at Hazeroth. They left Hazeroth and camped at Rithma. 
They left Rithma and camped at Rimen Pyrrhus. They left Rimen Pyrrhus and camped at Libna. They left Libna and camped at Rissa. They left Rissa and camped at Kihalatha. They left Kihalatha and camped at Mount Shefer. They left Mount Shefer and camped at Harada. They left Harada and camped at Mekaloth. They left Mekaloth and camped at Teath. They left Teath and camped at Terra. They left Terra and camped at Mithka. They left Mithka and camped at Hashmona. They left Hashmona and camped at Mosroth. They left Mosroth and camped at Bene Jaikin. They left Bene Jaikin and camped at Horhegagad. They left Horhegagad and camped at Jat Batha. They left Jat Batha and camped at Abrona. They left Abrona and camped at Ezion Geber. They left Ezion Geber and camped at Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. They left Kadesh and camped at Mount Hor at the border of Edom. While they were at the foot of Mount Hor, Aaron the priest was directed by the Lord to go up the mountain, and there he died. This happened in midsummer on the first day of the fifth month of the fortieth year after Israel's departure from Egypt. Aaron was 123 years old when he died there on Mount Hor. At that time, the Canaanite king of Ered, who lived in the Negev in the land of Canaan, heard that the people of Israel were approaching his land. Meanwhile, the Israelites left Mount Hor and camped at Zalmona. Then they left Zalmona and camped at Punan. They left Punan and camped at Oboth. They left Oboth and camped at Aya Abiram on the border of Moab. They left Aya Abiram and camped at Deban Gad. They left Deban Gad and camped at Almon Diblatham. They left Alman Diblatham and camped in the mountains east of the river near Mount Nebo. They left the mountains east of the river and camped on the plains of Moab beside the Jordan River across from Jericho. Along the Jordan River they camped from Beth Jeshemoth as far as the meadows of Acacia on the plains of Moab. While they were camped near the Jordan River on the plains of Moab opposite <coughs> Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you cross the Jordan River into the land of Canaan, you must drive out all the people living there. You must destroy all their carved and molten images and demolish all their pagan shrines. Take possession of the land and settle in it, because I have given it to you to occupy. You must distribute the land among the clans by sacred lot and in proportion to their size. A larger portion of land will be allotted to each of the larger clans, and a smaller portion will be allotted to each of the smaller clans. The decision of the sacred lot is final. In this way, the portions of land will be divided among your ancestral tribes. But if you fail to drive out the people who live in the land, those who remain will be like splinters in your eyes and thorns in your sides. They will harass you in the land where you live, and I will do to you what I had planned to do to them. Chapter 34 boundaries of the land. Then the Lord said to Moses, give these instructions to the Israelites. When you come into the land of Canaan, which I am giving you as your special possession, these will be the boundaries. The southern portion of your country will extend from the wilderness of Zin along the edge of Edom. The southern boundary will begin on the east at the Dead Sea. It will then run south past Scorpion Pass in the direction of Zin. Its southernmost point will be Kadesh Barnea, from which it will go to Hazar Adar and on to Asma. From Asma, the boundary will turn toward the Brook of Egypt and end at the Mediterranean Sea. Your western boundary will be the coastline of the Mediterranean Sea. Your northern boundary will begin at the Mediterranean Sea and run east to Mount Hor then to Lebo Hamath and on through Zedad and Ziphron to Hazar Enon. This will be your northern boundary. The eastern boundary will start at Hazar Enon and run south to Shephem, then down to Riblah on the east side of Ain. From there, the boundary will run down along the eastern edge of the Sea of Galilee and then along the Jordan River to the Dead Sea. These are the boundaries of your land. Then Moses told oh, the wow. Israelites, this territory oh, is the homeland you are to divide <laughs> among your... Sorry, I was wondering what was so itchy on my arm. It looks like a spreader bite got me. Sorry, I, I was just seeing what it looked like. I apologize. So, by sacred lot, the Lord has commanded that the land be divided among the nine and a half remaining tribes. The families of the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh have already received their grants of land on the east side of the Jordan River. 
across from Jericho toward the sunrise. Leaders to divide the land. And the Lord said to Moses, Eleazar the priest and Joshua son of Nun are the men designated to divide the grants of land among the people. Enlist one leader from each tribe to help them with the task. These are the tribes and the names of the leaders. Judah, Caleb, son of Jephunneh. Simeon, Shemuel, son of Amihud. Benjamin, Eladad, son of Kislan. Dan, Bukai, son of Jaglai. Manasseh, son of Joseph. Haniel, son of Ephod. Ephraim, son of Joseph. Kenuel, son of Shiphtan. Zebulon, Elizaphan, son of Parnak. Issachar, Paltiel, son of Azan. Asher, Ahihud, son of Shelemai. Naphtali, Padahil, son of Amihud. These are the men the Lord has appointed to divide the grants of land in Canaan among the Israelites. Chapter 35, Towns for the Levites. While Israel was camped beside the Jordan on the plains of Moab across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Command the people of Israel to give to the Levites from their property certain towns to live in, along with the surrounding pasture lands. These towns will be for the Levites to live in, and the surrounding lands will provide pasture for their cattle, flocks, and other livestock. The pasture land assigned to the Levites around these towns will extend 1,500 feet from the town walls in every direction. Measure off 3,000 feet outside the town walls in every direction, east, south, west, north, with the town at the center. This area will serve as the larger pasture land for the towns. Six of the towns you give the Levites will be cities of refuge where a person who has accidentally killed someone can flee for safety. In addition, give them 42 other towns, and all 48 towns with the surrounding pasture land will be given to the Levites. These towns will come from the property of the people of Israel. The larger tribes will give more towns to the Levites, while the smaller tribes will give fewer. Each tribe will give property in proportion to the size of its land. Cities of Refuge the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, designate cities of refuge to which people can flee if they have killed someone accidentally. These cities will be places of protection from a dead person's relatives who want to avenge the death. The slayer must not be put to death before being tried by the community. Designate six cities of refuge for yourselves, three on the east side of the Jordan River and three on the west in the land of Canaan. These cities are for the protection of Israelites, foreigners living among you, and traveling merchants. Anyone who accidentally kills someone may flee there for safety. But if someone strikes and kills another person with a piece of iron, it is murder, and the murderer must be executed. Or if someone with a stone in his hand strikes and kills another person, it is murder, and the murderer must be put to death. Or if someone strikes and kills another person with a wooden object, it is murder, and the murderer must be put to death. The victim's nearest relative is responsible for putting the murderer to death. When they meet, the avenger must put the murderer to death. So if someone hates another person and pushes him or throws a dangerous object at him and he dies, it is murder. Or if someone hates another person and hits him with a fist and he dies, it is murder. In such cases, the avenger must put the murderer to death when they meet. But suppose someone pushes another person without having shown previous hostility, or throws something that unintentionally hits another person, or accidentally drops a huge stone on someone, though they were not enemies, and the person dies. If this should happen, the community must follow these regulations in making a judgment between the slayer and the avenger, the victim's nearest relative. The community must protect the slayer from the avenger and must escort the slayer back to live in the city of refuge to which he fled. There he must remain until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the sacred oil. But if the slayer ever leaves the limits of the city of refuge and the avenger finds him outside the city and kills him, it will not be considered murder. The slayer should have stayed inside the city of refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer may return to his own property. These are legal requirements for you to observe from generation to generation wherever you may live. 
All murderers must be put to death, but only if evidence is presented by more than one witness. No one may be put to death on the testimony of only one witness. Also, you must never accept a ransom payment for the life of someone judged guilty of murder and subject to execution. Murderers must always be put to death. And never accept a ransom payment from someone who has fled to a city of refuge, allowing a slayer to return to his property before the death of the high priest. This will ensure that the land where you live will not be polluted, for murder pollutes the land. And no sacrifice except the execution of the murderer can purify the land from murder. You must not defile the land where you live, for I live there myself. I am the Lord who lives among the people of Israel. Okay, one, oops, sorry. One more, that's it. Chapter 36. And then we're done with numbers. Women who inherit property. Then the heads of the clans of Gilead, descendants of Maker, son of Manasseh, son of Joseph, came to Moses and the family leaders of Israel with a petition. They said, Sir, the Lord instructed you to divide the land by sacred lot among the people of Israel. You were told by the Lord to give the grant of land owned by our brother Zelophehad to his daughters. But if they marry men from another tribe, their grants of land will go with them to the tribe into which they marry. In this way, the total area of our tribal land will be reduced. Then when the year of Jubilee comes, their portion of land will be added to that of the new tribe, causing it to be lost forever to our ancestral tribe. So Moses gave the Israelites this command from the Lord. The claim of the men of the tribe of Joseph is legitimate. This is what the Lord commands concerning the daughters of Zelophehad. Let them marry anyone they like as long as it is within their own ancestral tribe. None of the territorial land may pass from tribe to tribe, for all the land given to each tribe must remain within the tribe to which it was first allotted. The daughters throughout the tribes of Israel who are in line to inherit property must marry within their tribe, so that all the Israelites will keep their ancestral property. No grant of land may pass from one tribe to another. Each tribe of Israel must keep its allotted portion of land. The daughters of Zelophehad did as the Lord commanded Moses. Mala, Terza, Hogla, Milka, and Noah all married cousins on their father's side. They married into the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. Thus, their inheritance of land remained within their ancestral tribe. These are the commands and regulations <coughs> that the Lord gave to the people of Israel through Moses while they were camped on the plains of Moab beside the Jordan River across from Jericho. And that is it for numbers. We're done with numbers and we're starting a reading plan tomorrow. Uh, freedom from sin. Can you see it? Freedom from Sin, it's a five-day reading plan. I like to do reading plans in between books from the Bible. So I will see you tomorrow for that. I hope you gain something from this. Love, God loves you. Love, don't judge. Peace out.